Manish, a pleasure having you on VC Circle TV. I want to start the interview with, uh, you know, where did you get the concept for this company? And uh, what was the reason behind something coming up in this uh, space? Thanks, thanks for uh, for having me uh, on this interview. And uh, uh, so essentially, I, I, I got the idea of uh, starting M Swipe uh, because of a problem that I faced in one of my earlier businesses. Uh, I set up a, a chain of uh, specialty wine and beer retail stores uh, and uh, I approached my bank to uh, provide me with a, uh, a terminal so that I could acquire uh, credit cards for my customers. Uh, and I, I guess that is something that, that almost mm -hmm. all small businesses want to do. And uh, I was a little uh, surprised when uh, when my bank, uh, which is a fairly well established nationalized nationalized bank, said that they did not even offer that service. Okay. Um, uh, in a bit to actually. This was how far back? This was about four years ago, four okay. and a half four years ago. And uh, uh, I I was compelled to actually uh, uh, seek these services from a competing bank. Okay. Uh, and I was really uh, taken aback by the terms that these banks actually put forth uh, mm. to, uh, to provide me these services. Okay. And uh, that got me thinking that you know there has to be a better way uh, for uh, for uh, you know small merchants to be able to accept card payments. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I investigated this a little deeper, and what I found was essentially uh, post terminals, which was yeah. uh, at, the, at the center of all of this, were uh, were essentially uh, devices that were developed in the West okay. uh, and uh, they took a few things for granted. Uh, for example, uh, you know, most of these are PSDN terminals which are tethered to landlines uh, mm. uh, and uh, they essentially require continuous 24 by 7 power yeah. uh, and these are, uh, you know, these are things that, that are uh, that are taken for granted abroad but you know, in, in India it's not really, uh, it's mm. not really a given. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, we've had the poorest tele density, you know, as as a nation. Yeah. And mobile has really uh, helped us bridge that. Mm. So, what is the partnership, or where does Home Data come in? So, is that uh, a technology transfer that you've done from them, or are you developing it here? What is the so essentially, uh, Rome Data initially uh, provided us uh, the technology as well as the product, okay. uh, what, what, uh, which is essentially the hardware piece that, that yeah. goes into it. We've developed everything else downstream from there, which mm -hmm. is essentially the mobile application. Uh, there is a server side, uh, uh, a gateway payment uh, payment application, and, and all the other uh, other services that go with it. Right. So which is essentially connectivity to a payment switch, uh, you know, settlement platforms for our merchants, uh, you know, reports. Um, the messaging systems uh, in terms of you know emailing receipts, archiving those receipts, which is essentially charge slips. Uh, so all of that was built by us. Okay. And uh, so you know we essentially uh, worked with Rome's technology and uh, um, and modified it so that it would actually work with uh, with feature phones. Hmm. And uh, uh, once we had that, we we approached the card associations, uh, which is essentially Visa and Mastercard. Yeah. Uh, the, the objective of doing that was uh, uh, to get uh, get a waiver because, mm -hmm. uh, as per uh, Visa Master regulations uh, in India, uh, all terminals that are deployed for acquiring card transactions have to necessarily be uh, what is known as EMB compliant. Okay. Uh, this is a global standard for for card payments now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, unfortunately, at that time, we did not have uh, the capability to uh, to build a, uh, an EMB. Uh, uh, card reader, mm -hmm. and, uh, which would essentially work with with uh, with mobile phones, and uh, so we approached the card associations for a for a time limited waiver so that we could actually get started okay. uh, with commitment that within a certain span of time we would actually introduce uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know EMB compliant uh, uh, swipers, and uh, we got that waiver uh, uh, sometime in the beginning of last year. Uh, uh, post that, we, we went to banks for the next uh, port of calling uh, because the banks essentially had to uh, had to uh, endorse our product to be okay. for us to be able to actually acquire merchants or uh, okay. uh, get started. And uh, I mean, we went to a couple of banks, and uh, you know, Axis Bank was, uh, was very. Uh, uh, so, how many banks do you have on board now? We currently have just one. Just one bank. So yes. that is Axis Bank. Access bank. Okay. okay. So essentially, we went to Axis Bank. They looked at the technology. They liked what we had. And uh, uh, you know, 
in 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 exchange for for getting us started, uh, they wanted an exclusive, which we, we okay, uh, which is why I went back. And mm. uh, in, in a way, you know, these are early days for Mobile Boss in, mm. in India. You know, we said that it's it's best that we work with one one partner bank that is enthusiastic and help us, um, uh, you know, achieve some of our okay. uh, our milestones. And, and Axis Bank has been a fantastic partner. In India. Okay. Uh, Products that you have. So the products that we have essentially are uh, our mainstay products are our swipers. Yeah. So let me let me show you some of those. Uh, you know, so essentially this is uh, this is the swiper that we okay. uh, that we launched with. Uh, this is what a swiper essentially looks like. Okay. Um, it's it's a solid state device. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's got a 3.5 mm module jack. Uh, so this is the product that we essentially started with. Uh, post this we sort of uh, worked with uh, some some of uh, our. Uh, our suppliers and and uh, have this uh, as this a mainstay product. Okay. Right? Okay. And then you just swipe your card up on the side. You essentially, have a card reader which you uh, plug into the audio jack of the phone. Uh, okay. Application uh, uh, provides options for card yeah. sale, avoiding the transaction. So this is the application first page of the application. That's it. This, yeah. is, this is the home page of the application. Uh, you know, we've kept it very simple so that it's, yeah. it's easy to use. You enter card sale. You enter an amount. Uh, let's say 15 rupees. 150 bucks. Okay, mm. good. I'll get paid more. So this is the chip card that you're talking. This is yeah, yeah, but it also has Mac. Right? Okay. Uh, 43. Into the last four digits. 4307. Say next. Uh, you press OK. Mm. Uh, you press Start. Yeah, it powers up the device. Uh, you swipe the card. Okay. Okay. It gives you uh, basic information on the card. You say OK. You enter your mobile number for receipts. Mm -hmm. Number and submit this. Uh, sorry, submit. Right. Processing card sale. Acknowledging. This shows you the approval number. Yeah. You say okay, and this is a chart slip. Uh, it's a digital chart slip. You just sign. Okay. Uh, sign on the screen itself. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then you hit submit. Hmm. This then gets uh, submitted. Gives you. Uh, gives you confirmation that it's it's been uploaded. So and what is the time pricing of this? Uh, it's about uh, 2000 rupees. Okay. With the application included? Application is free. The application is free. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, our payment application is free. There's no cost for it. Once uh, mm. you have our swiper, uh, you know, you can download our payment application from our uh, from our uh, website. And, mm. uh, and of course, we have uh, we have trained uh, service personnel uh, on the ground who would actually you know, help you uh, okay. that in case required. Uh, so this is our mainstay product. Mm. Uh, but what we have done is, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the merchants that, that we knew we were going to would be first time merchants. Okay. Who uh, would never have used a post terminal before. Mm. And that was essentially the objective of this technology was to take it to merchants who never really yeah. accepted card. Um, uh, so we, we offer what we call Enchlux Merchant Box. Okay. And so Merchant Box essentially is, uh, uh, is, 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 a, is a box that has our swiper, mm. uh, a phone. Uh, the phone has that application preloaded on it. It has a SIM card with okay. the data plan. These are essentially uh, dual SIM phones. Uh, so uh, the objective is that one of the SIM is a data SIM which we already provide, and the other one is a SIM card slot that's empty, which the merchant can actually use uh, for his uh, for his own uh, use. Okay. Uh, so uh, we we wanted to offer this um, uh, to essentially make it extremely simple for for a merchant hmm. to uh, start accepting card payments. So okay. Rather than uh, go the route that 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 was adopted by some of our uh, you know or some industry leaders yeah. in the U.S. Whereby uh, you know they all all they provided was this, mm. and then you had to download your application on your iPhone and uh, okay. and then configure it and get started. Mm. Um, you know we we thought that you know it's it's best to make this offering to merchants as well. Okay. So we offer offer two essential uh, products. One is the swiper. So if a merchant mm. is confident that he has a data plan on his phone and it all works fine, he can just buy the swiper from us, mm. uh, and uh, we'll set him up on our platform to start transacting. So we essentially have two business models. Right? Okay. Uh, so uh, at at MSWIPE we essentially have two divisions uh, that are operational. One is of course a traditional services uh, business whereby we offer this to banks so that they can go on and offer it to them. So they uh, In this model, essentially they they set the the rules in terms of. Uh, uh, what merchants they want to board? Uh, what's the what's the pricing for this uh, service uh, to mm -hmm. the merchants? Um, and for us, it's a transfer price to the bank, okay. uh, and we provide the service uh, to the bank's merchants. Uh, mm -hmm. The other one is a um, 
is is our merchant acquiring business, okay. which essentially uh, enables uh, uh, our, you know we have a tie up again with Axis Bank. Uh, okay. We need that uh, as per current regulation. Okay. Uh, and uh, we actually go out and and, uh, and convince small merchants to to buy our device and, and start accepting card payments. Okay. Uh, so we essentially have two business models uh, which are completely independent. Uh, but isn't there a problem if you go and acquire the merchant, but the merchant has not got a compliant bank for M Swipe? No, it's not. In fact, that's our value proposition. Okay. So essentially, today what what happens is that our platform is set up in such a way that you could be uh, a merchant who's got mm -hmm. an account with X Y Z bank. Okay. It could be any bank uh, in the country. Um, you don't need to move your bank account. You don't do not need to open a bank account, uh, a new bank account. All you need to do is get the M Swipe uh, device, and we will. Uh, we will configure it uh, in such a way that uh, you get your money on a T plus two basis in your bank account. Right? Okay. So all you need to do is transact, accept the card payment, uh, mm. you know, uh, uh, and, and money will end up in your bank account in, uh, on a T plus two basis. Okay. What are the kind of royalties that Rome Data is getting from this? Uh, well, uh, Rome. Uh, well again, these, these are financial things that I really would not want to discuss. Okay. Considering India is like the guru of reverse engineering. Yeah, what are, what are the barriers to entry into this space? What's stopping another company from saying reverse engineering this and coming out with a product of their own? So reverse engineering an iPhone is not difficult, right? So yeah. uh, you can do that. Uh, the issue is that uh, you're right. I mean, everything can be reverse engineered. Yeah. That, however, there are there are various uh, various aspects to that. One, of course, is uh, the ability to be able to get the whole system in place. It's not just okay. about hardware. Right? This is this is about hardware embedded firmware. It's about you know mobile uh, mobile. Uh, Software. It's yeah. about payment, uh, you know, payment processing platform. Yeah. Uh, and uh, reliability of all of this. Right? Yeah. So it has to be tested, it has to be certified, and has to make mm. sure that it's robust enough to okay. to meet the requirements. Are there patents on this? There are patents on it. Yes, okay. Absolutely. So there are patents on it, uh, and that's that's an extra roadblock. Of course, you can arguably say that in India, patents have yeah. value. Uh, in my mind, they do. I mean, the, okay. the set of people that we really deal with is essentially banks. Uh, uh, you know, they they. They value uh, uh, intellectual property, and, and so you will have you will have people trying to uh, you know uh, capitalize on the opportunity. Um, we will try and of course. Our are you aware of any other company trying to enter? Yes, quite a few. Yes. Uh, so in know, India as well. In India as well. Yes. So there okay. is Easy Tap uh, out of Bangalore. Hmm. That is a similar device, and then there are host of other. I think that's the only credible competitor, honestly, at this stage. There are lots of other people out there uh, who, like you rightly said. You know, What's there? We can you can build a card reader. Hmm. Fair enough. I mean, there are a few people who have done that. Uh, it's just that, uh, like I said, it's it's not about hardware. Okay. It's, it's about the whole uh, platform. Hmm. Uh, and even after you build the platform, you need to test it, and, and after a while, you know, uh, or or even before before you do anything, uh, uh, banks and the financial community per se has to trust. It. Okay. So I think that's that's the advantage we have. I mean, we we I think got got all the pieces together. Um, and um, and we, we had the first mover advantage, hmm. uh, which uh, which I think is uh, which will play an integral role. Yes. What is the kind of cost saving? What is the regular uh, cost terminal that is being used today in the market? Uh, really cost and how much is the difference between this product? This is two thousand rupees. So what is the kind of difference there? Uh, a conventional POS, uh, you know, PST and POS would be about uh, eight to ten thousand, depending on what brand and what features that you really want. Uh, a GPRS POS terminal is uh, is substantially more expensive, you know, anywhere from uh, twelve and a half to fifteen thousand rupees, depending on uh, again the brand and, uh, and hmm. uh, the feature set of the product. But uh, yeah, those are the those are the only two competing products that you essentially uh, can can equate this with. Uh, this falls somewhere in between, uh, you know, because uh, it uh, uh, it has uh, the mobility yeah. of a GPRS POS terminal uh, hmm. and. Uh, 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 it, it also has the convenience of a PST terminal in terms of cost. You know, mm -hmm. Essentially, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a low cost device. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's other than idea. other than earning revenue on the product itself, do you also get some kind of service charge app applied or some kind of royalty for every transaction? Uh, yeah, we do get a small fee per transaction. Okay. What kind of margin is that? Uh, these are these commercial details which I really would want. Okay, let's get an idea of you know how the company is going to move forward in terms of you know what you have projected. So there is one, uh, the first business model is targeting the banks themselves. Yeah. So let's say by the time you get your B two C product out, how many kind of how many types of banks or how many number of banks would you like to target? 
Uh, ideally, I I would really want to uh, you know uh, go to too many banks. Okay. Essentially, the bank provides us as the service. Right? The service yeah. is essentially uh, uh, and interconnect with uh, with the card Resum teams and yeah. and, the, and the, the payment network. Uh, you know, in in, in general. Um, in my view, you know, for uh, for our uh, our B two C offering, or even for our uh, uh, our own merchant acquiring business, uh, uh, we're happy working with Axis at this stage. Okay. We don't really need to go to many banks. Like I said, I mean, having more banks essentially drives up costs for us. In what way? I mean, at, at the end of the day, a bank becomes a customer. Uh, you know, we then need to have the support infrastructure to be, able to, you know, deliver on uh, on, on all okay. of those. Uh, Aspects uh, hmm. of the business, and, you know, and as long as uh, you know, at least for the next uh, uh, you know eight to twelve months, uh, uh, we have uh, we have uh, a pretty strong uh, order pipe from uh, Axis Bank. Okay, we just wanted to make sure that we we deliver and execute on that. Uh, uh, you know. Long before you need to raise another round. Uh, by by we'll we'll be uh, we're looking at, at or considering uh, doing our next round uh, sometime end of this year or early next year. Okay. So once we have our our uh, next generation products uh, hmm. uh, out there in the market, and, and before that you're going to see this in the market. This is this is what this is essentially uh, uh, this is a product that is uh, that we believe is Asia's first. Uh, EMV L1 L2 certified product. Okay. okay so, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there was a waiver that we obtained from the card associations yeah. uh, to launch uh, this product. It yeah. doesn't read chip cards and it's not what's called EMV certified. This is a fully certified, uh, you know, EMV certified uh, swiper. Okay. Uh, that can take magnetic card as well as chip card. Okay. okay and uh, so, this is the product that you're going to see in market uh, very, very soon. Mm. Um, but do, have you seen a lot of chip cards here? No, we have, but uh, there's an RBI mandate that uh, that uh, says that you know the acquiring infrastructure has to be chip card ready, and okay. it's, it's pretty much a chicken and egg situation, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have the acquiring infrastructure, yeah. these banks can't issue chip cards. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's uh, that's the path that the regulator is following. I think that it's uh, that's the only way. Is there an eventuality where this can be used as B two C? Because many customers are now using you know the mobile phone for making most of their transactions. One way is to do uh, and sit down on the web and do your internet banking and do the payment online. But is there a process where it's, I can just swipe my card? And very good question, and that's uh, that's that's what that's what's on the agenda. Okay. Uh, later on this year, where we're going to launch a, a path breaking product. I think so. Okay. Which, which will enable uh, um, individuals mm -hmm. to use our device to essentially. Uh, uh, so the so the way it work is that you know you have uh, on your on your website you yeah. have a little uh, icon that will say pay by swipe mm. and if you have an swipe device, okay. uh, all you need to just click on that and swipe mm. your card on the device and capture all your card details, okay. securely transfer it to our server for authentication. And there's a huge uh, huge uh, convenience aspect as well as security aspect associated with it. Yeah. Um, convenience is of course you don't need to fill in all your yes. details. Uh, uh, more importantly. Uh, uh, it's it's very fast mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's also very very secure because uh, you know your card details are, are not filled out on, on, on a web page or a web form yeah. essentially encrypted on on the device mm -hmm. and then transferred to our server. Yeah. Um, you know. So how how far away are we seeing this? Uh, how much time will we see the B two C product? Uh, well, if if everything was as per plan before uh, before the before the year is out. Okay. Uh, so, do you have uh, a projected market that you're targeting? Have you have you sized out a universe that you say this is the merchant or this is the audience that I'm going to sell to, and what is the size of that market? Uh, we are we're currently in just just about uh, uh, you know our products in alpha. Okay. So I, I guess uh, what, let me get get to a beta product and then we'll start. Uh, okay. Put okay. on our thinking cap on how we're going to market that product. But I, I think in India the market is huge and. That will essentially have to be a, a straight on a mobile accessory. Uh, you know, or, uh, you know, so are you working with the wrong data for this product as well? No. This is a unique product that you would come up with. Okay. But uh, on the merchant side as well, now you've got 6,000 uh, merchants on board? We have a total of uh, 6,500 merchants on board. Okay. And how much would you want that to increase by say uh, in one year's time? 
One, I'd be happy if we get to about 50,000. 50,000? 50, yeah. Okay. So, but then that is a lot of uh, marketing and there's a lot of spend on uh, research and mar uh, on marketing and distribution, right? More distribution and sales, I mean, not, not a lot of marketing. I mean, card fraud is becoming uh, uh, a growing problem. Exactly. And uh, the regulator essentially plans to bring in uh, 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 a bunch of uh, a bunch of regulations, EMB being one of them, because chip okay. cards are very difficult to clone, uh, associated with uh, with some very strong second factor authentication, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, you know, PIN. Uh, so essentially, uh, you know, trying to move uh, uh, to a to a more secure chip and PIN kind of uh, uh, okay. infrastructure. And I think that is where uh, that is where the game will start changing a lot, mm -hmm. uh, because. Uh, uh, going back to what you said, it's easy. It's it's, it's relatively easy to use yeah. a device like this. But as uh, as you move forward, uh, you know, and try to produce a chip reader, and then you know, try to produce a uh, certified uh, device that can actually accept pin input. Hmm. That is where you know uh, the technology starts getting a little complicated. Complicated. And yeah. That's when uh, you know things get interesting. What is the market for roam data, say, in the in the in the American market for something like this? So, roam essentially uh, uh, is uh, is the second largest player. I think that they have uh, they have more than a million of these uh, deployed in the U.S. Okay, uh, and uh, they also have uh, pretty large customers in the U.S. So, roam essentially doesn't is 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 just a white label provider for for this technology okay. for for various other banks, etc. Mm. in the U.S. And uh, they have they have large customers and, and they have more than a million of these uh, deployed in the US alone. Okay. Uh, so that's and considering your large uh, mobile market, you're expecting a large market for these devices in India as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So what could that market size be? Uh, well, I uh, the way I look at it in India, we can we can uh, we can uh, estimate uh, that in the next three to five years we'll have at least a million. Million, you know, 1.2 or million terminals installed. Hmm. Uh, this in is both. To this is terminals as a whole, or just terminals as a whole. Okay. okay. This is in addition to the current, uh, current, uh, you know, half a million odd terminals that have already been installed. Okay. Uh, so that's that's the kind of growth I expect uh, in the industry. Uh, that is because essentially we have a lot of card holders already out there. Right? Okay. India has 340 odd million card holders. Hmm. Uh, it's just that you know there are not enough points of sale. Yeah. For these card holders to actually go and use these terminals, uh, mm. uh, use their cards. But once uh, once technology like this becomes more prevalent, I'm sure that's actually all right. Well, on that note, Manish, thank you for talking to me. Thank you very much. Thank you.